Good morning and welcome to worship with First Baptist Church Decatur. Well, we all wish that we could be gathered together in person this morning. Know that we are gathered together as the body of Christ wherever you find yourself today. Know that as we gather for worship, God's presence is here with us. Where two or three are gathered, we read, God is there also. So this morning, as we hear scripture and sing music and pray together, know that God's presence is in this place and in the place where you are, just as if we were gathered together in worship in our building on the corner of Claremont and Commerce. Welcome to worship. Peace be with you. Two.
let us pray. Oh, good and gracious God, your word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And oh, we are coming to you this morning asking for you to light the way for us today. We find ourselves using the word unprecedented to describe the events of 2020, knowing that we are in uncharted territory, God. Our bodies need for us to maintain social distance while our hearts are aching for a hug, for connection. So we ask that you would light the way with your love, showing us the path to loving each other well. For those of us at our wit's end, sharing small space with big families, give us patience and peace. And for those who live alone and face loneliness and isolation, give them community and friendship in creative ways. Light away toward healing, God, as healthcare workers treat the ill and scientists develop treatments and vaccines and public health professionals advise on policies and lawmakers implement those policies. May you go before each one and light the way toward healing. And light the way toward justice, God. As those of us who have navigated the world oblivious to systems of racial inequalities, light a way toward acknowledgement and repentance. For those who have been painfully aware of injustice all their lives, light a way toward healing and wholeness, God. Like the pillar of smoke that went before the Israelites, go before us, Lord, and we will follow you into uncharted territory. For we trust your goodness and we trust your plan for this world, God. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Psalm 119, verses 105 through 112. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. This is the word of the Lord. Some of you have heard me quote my grandmother before who shared with me years and years ago an anonymous quote about the Bible. The quote is, the Bible is a place where babes can wade and find meaning, and scholars can swim and never touch bottom. The Bible is a place where babes can wade and find meaning, and scholars can swim and never touch bottom. Today's lesson from Psalm 119 strikes me as the perfect example of what that anonymous saying shares, the depth and breadth and scope of the biblical wisdom is truly remarkable. And Psalm 119 exemplifies that. First of all, just from a uh, standpoint of, of interesting facts, uh, Psalm 119 stands very, or sits very close to the, the middle of the Bible, the exact middle of of our Old Testament and New Testament, the 66 books, Psalm 118 lies at the very middle. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in all the Bible, and this, the chapter before Psalm 117 is the shortest chapter in the Bible. Is that coincidence? I don't know. Uh, scholars debate on the importance of that or the interesting facts of that, but for me, uh, Psalm 119, lying very close to the center of the Bible, represents in a way uh, its, its import for us as Christians, and especially as disciples of Jesus trying to study the Bible more clearly and 
hear God's words more nearly and dearly to us, Psalm 119 is a terrific place to focus and really dig in. St. Augustine of Hippo used to say that Psalm 119 is so deep and so wide, we can never truly get the true depth and breadth and scope and meaning of what these words say. Psalm 119, our focus is just simply a few verses kind of in the middle of Psalm 119, but it's uh, really getting at, I think, some some very elemental parts of the, the broader scope of this chapter. It begins with your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, growing up, I'm sure many of you were like me. First of all, there was a song that Amy Grant made famous some years ago. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And it, it, it goes over and over again. It's got some verses to it. And many of us learned that early on. And of course, our interpretation, my interpretation of that was the Bible is this lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And in a way, it, it's conveying that, but that unfortunately doesn't do justice to what Psalm 119 is actually saying. For contained within this framework of these 176 verses in this longest chapter of the whole Bible are eight different words for word. So when it says thy word or your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, there are a lot more uh, intricate ways of taking this meaning than just simply your word, meaning scripture alone. So we'll look at that a little more carefully. First of all, that beginning verse from the uh, verse 105 in Psalm 119 your word, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light into my path. The image of that is important for us to take because for today's confusing living and the many things that we're dealing with, whether it's COVID-19 and this, this resurgence of danger and the fear that many of us are, are feeling, the confusion we have with how to move forward, the concern about uh, systemic racism and uh, quest for racial justice and racial equality and all the tensions surrounding the many things that are happening in our lives, politically, socially, environmentally, a lot is going on. And Psalm 119 is a really good way of getting some solid ground of where to stand. Let's look then at this, this first verse in our passage for today. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light into my path. The image there is valuable because it simply conjures the ancient way of people walking at night. Uh, we have flashlights and lanterns and things that we can use. We can flip on a light switch and illuminate a pathway or, or allow ourselves the luxury of, of being able to get rid of the darkness by simply flipping a light switch. As opposed to in Jesus' day and in the day of the psalmist, writing Psalm 119, you didn't have a light switch. You didn't have a flashlight. What you had was a, a lantern, an oil lantern, that would have a, a fuel source within the lantern and a little flame that would be emitting light at the end of that lantern. So the flame was sort of the, the light to the pathway. And so in order to move forward, uh, often people would, would hold these lanterns out in front of them, but to see a really rocky, dangerous pathway or a place where footing might be a little less predictable, you could take a rope and attach that rope to the lantern and allow the lantern to dangle closer to foot level by therefore uh, having it closer to where you're walking. It would illuminate not so much the uh, far reaches of where you're headed, but would illuminate your path step by step. The illustration for me is, is valuable in the entrance to our passage today. This idea that, that God's word, as we're going to study in a moment, is so all-encompassing, and yet it takes us one step at a time. It allows us to, to have a 
broader sense of vision and hope for the future by taking step by step, one step of faith followed by another step of faith. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. It gives me hope that there is something out there worthwhile and hopeful, and yet it takes me one step at a time. That is this, this structure that we want to look at now. The idea of a lamp unto my feet, the idea of our Psalm 119 encompassing something fascinating. Now, not only is this little middle part of 119 helpful in this idea of one step at a time of faith, a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, but this Psalm 119 is structured in a way that not only allows us to feel a step-by-step -step faith that illumines the broader picture of God's providence, it also allows us to see that the author of Psalm 119 was very devoted to moving us through words of devotion, words of healing, and words of structured faith that are truly remarkable. Some of you are aware that Psalm 119 has within it what's called an acrostic. It is structured in the sense that it starts with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it moves on through step by step through the entirety of all 176 verses with these sections starting with a particular particular letter of the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, so there are 22 different sections within these 176 verses in Psalm 119. So we begin with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, so in our equivalent, it would be our 26 letters of the English alphabet. The first word of this psalm would start with the equivalent of A or Aleph in the Hebrew alphabet. And the next one would be the equivalent of our B and then C and then D, moving through with the 22 different letters. And each word that begins that new phrasing, that new passage of one 19 starts with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it would be as though uh, we would begin a section of a particular psalm with the letter A, uh, a word that starts with the letter A, and the next section would start with the word that began with the letter B and on through our 26 letters in the alphabet. In Hebrew, it is the 20 two letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So it's, it's very highly structured and a remarkable sequence of these, these praises and laments woven together in a faithful dialogue of the heart and the mind structured around the word, word. So this moves us now to the scope of Psalm 119. So the structure is, is fascinating. It kind of gets at this step-by-step movement of faith. It is structured around this acrostic from the Hebrew alphabet. Now, the scope is now uh, encompassing eight different Hebrew words for the word, word. We begin with the 105th verse, which starts, again, our section of of Scripture today, and it is the word we're probably most familiar with. It's an echo of John 1.1, 1, 1, where it says, in the beginning when God uh, created the heavens and the earth is the Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. Well, in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, God speaks creation into being. So in John 1.1, 1, 1, it is, uh, in the beginning was the word, that is God's spoken word. So what we have in, in the first part of our section today, your word is a lamp unto my feet. The word is actually dabar, which is the Hebrew word for word. In other words, God's spoken word. What God says to me is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So it's not so much uh, the, the, the written word that we would assume this is talking about. It incorporates that for certainly the written word is part of God's speech, God speaking to 
the hearts and the minds and the spirits of those who've come before us, who have recorded those things in their inspiration as God's inspired words to us. But the word is actually God's spoken word. That is what God speaks into creation. God still speaks into you and to me. It is God's spoken word, dabar. Now, these different words for for word uh, flow as follows. There is, of course, another word for word, Torah, which is the equivalent of teaching. God's Torah. So the first five books of the Old Testament we refer to as Torah. The translation some of us have used over the years is law, but in fact, the better translation is teaching, Torah. Then Dabar is the next one we said is the spoken word. There's also Imra, which is God's promise. It is God's word to us as in God's word is God's bond. It is God's covenant with us. Imra. There is Mispatim, which is God's judgments to us, for us, and with us. There is Chukim, God's statutes for us. There is Mishbot, which is God's commandments for us. There is Edot, which is God's stipulations or decrees to us. And there is Pikudim, which is God's precepts for us. Now, what's fascinating is our passage for today incorporates about six of those eight words for words. It moves back and forth from decrees and judgments and statutes. It talks about God's spoken word, but also God's Torah, God's teaching. The the scope of this is broad and deep and rich. And it offers now, as we move to conclusion, this perspective. In Psalm 119, there is this step-by-step faithful movement through our lives and our journeys of faith, illumined by, by God's word, as in God's spoken word to our hearts and our minds and our spirits, but also God's commandments, precepts, statutes, decrees, judgments, promises, teachings, all incorporated into this sense of giving life and hope in the midst of difficulty. So our final perspective, we've got the the intricate structure of Psalm 119. We've got the vast scope of the words of God. And there is this perspective. It is a perspective, first of all, of realistic coping. Psalm 119 throughout all 176 verses is is terribly graphically realistic about how difficult life can be, how confusing life can be, how competitive life can be. It does not miss any punches or pull any punches about how what you and I have to deal with on a daily basis is very similar to what the, the psalmist articulates throughout Psalm 119. There is this humble word about, I feel so humbled because I have been, in in various ways, humiliated, brought down by what Psalm uh, 119 often calls my enemies or my competitors or the the people who are are causing me harm or seeking me uh, injustice. There is this realistic coping of I cling to your word because you are my hope in the times of difficulty. There's also this expansive faith. The eight different words for God's word take us on this journey that encompasses really every aspect of life, spoken, written, heard, experienced, So that God's word, we find, is is woven throughout our living so that we can give praise to God in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the fact that we may have been humiliated or humbled in a way that did not feel good. And yet we, we emerge from those experiences, perhaps we hope, with a new sense of perspective and hope and humility that is positive and healthy and healing. It is a realistic 
coping with the difficulties of life. It is an expansive faith in God's all-encompassing aspects of embracing us in all of life. And as a result of all of this, there is a humble gratitude. Throughout Psalm 119, you get the clear sense that the psalmist, in spite of frustrations and discouragements and difficulties, repeatedly comes back to, I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to sing with all my heart in spite of my competitors and those who seek me harm, in spite of the, the, the difficulty I face in perhaps a pandemic or quest for uh, reconciliation and uh, equitable treatment and, and asking for honor and dignity in spite of my hurt and pain, I am going to keep this expansive faith and I'm going to praise regardless. I'm going to sing for joy with all my heart because you were with me no matter what. Your word is expansive and all-encompassing and all-embracing in every aspect of who I am because of whose I am. And there is a humble gratitude, almost with a kneeling uh, before the throne of grace, with this sense, how great is our God. I hope Psalm 119 for you has illustrated the depth and breadth and power of the gift of Scripture, but more than that, the gift of being together in a faithful journey, following our God, following in faith this step-by-step illumined path that may not tell us exactly where we're going, but lets us know step-by-step we are in this together with God's grace. And with humble gratitude, together we can say, how great is our God. Hear those words now from Eliel and from Daniel. As with a beat of a bossa nova, and when this was done, it was created in the midst of adversity and difficulty, singing in spite of the discouragements and the hurts. How great is my God. With humble gratitude, with realistic coping, and with expansive faith. Let us praise God together. Thanks be to God. our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And now we'll see how great, how great is our God. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great How great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God to age his stands and time is in his hands beginning and the end beginning in the end the God had three in one father spirit and son the lion and the lamb the lion and the lamb how great is our God see with me how great is our God and I will see how great how great is our God name above all names worthy of all praise 
God's word is still here. God's word still speaks and God's word is still a light unto our path. As your heart moves from worship back to the world, may you seek to hear God's word with joy in your heart and expectation in your soul. May your peace be in 